Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first question, who has a free seat next to them? Raise your hand. Any free seats? Uh, you know how to reallocate this. Who here doesn't speak Polish? One hand, two hands, yeah, and this, okay, more hands. This talk was advertised as one in English, and if there are non-Polish speakers, I'm going to continue in English, so you don't have to be afraid. Uh, welcome, everyone, to my talk, 910 Java 11. Uh, I know it has been misadvertised in some places, differently. Uh, to start with the basics, uh, the floor here is, of course, available. I won't tell you to sit on the floor, but I'm very honored that you wish to sit here on the floor. My name is Andrzej Grzesik. I'm a Java champion. I organize Geekon. I'm involved in a, in a lot of user groups. I have a Twitter, I have an email, and I have a blog, which is kind of dead, but I still have it. Uh, so that we have those here. If you want the slides, email me after the conference. I'll be more than happy to share them uh, or just approach me because I'm going to be here today and I'm going to be here, here tomorrow. Uh, very important remarks. Uh, I am not a lawyer, so what you hear here is not professional legal s support or suggestions. And I am not an Oracle employee, which means uh, what I say does not represent their view. It represents my understanding of their view. Uh, this talk is going to be about what's happening to Java. Uh, if somebody expects a hugely in-depth talk about the gory details of the JVM, I'm sorry to disappoint them. I saw that there is a lot of misinformation in the internet about what's happening to Java, licensing, support, do we have to pay now? Uh, people seem to be lost. Who understands uh, what's happening with licensing and support and Java 11? Hands up. OK, three people. Who feels a bit confused? Yeah. So my goal at the end, or if not at the end, grab me later and we'll talk more, is to make you totally certain that the career choice that we've all made, because I write Java on a daily basis, including the weekends, uh, but that's for hobby reasons, uh, it's fine. It's still available. It's still a good platform and the best platform, in my humble opinion, to write software on. So I hope I can instill some confidence in you as well. Uh, too long didn't read, because this is just after lunch. Java is still free. Still. It's fine. And we'll start with a quick survey. Who here is on JDK 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7? Anybody? Yeah, two hands. Poor souls. Uh, JDK 8. That includes me. Uh, JDK 9? A few hands. JDK 10? Wow, congrats. Uh, and uh, JDK 11. One, two, three, wow. Four, five. Incre impressive. So because most of you is based on JDK 8, this talk, I expected to this to be the situation, is going to cover some of the features or some of the changes that have taken place since uh, JDK 8 was released. So we'll cover some Java 9, some Java 10, and some Java 11. The ones I, deci I decided are worthy or noteworthy uh, of being shown. So we're starting with Java 9, the huge announcement of last year, Java 1, the last Java 1 so far. And because now it's code 1, so there will, won't be any more Java 1s. Java 9, the huge new release. What happens is, first of all, we get a new version string. Uh, what, it, what the version looks like is right li like that. We get a Java platform module system. So if you're using modules, uh, congrats. Uh, from my personal experience, uh, we aren't there yet. Uh, libraries are migrating. If you're an author of a library, try to spend the time, try to be module compliant. This will allow people who use your, your library to work with your library and keep, keep being used. Uh, there is a session called Beyond Jigsaw that looks li like it's going to cover a lot of uh, the stuff that you should know about modules. But uh, do you understand why modules actually made it to the platform? What's, what's, the, what's the biggest, the most important uh, reason, at least in my perspective, and what's the biggest gain? I would say that it's for the compiler and the runtime to operate under similar environments. Guys standing, if you want to sit on the floor, sorry, I cannot offer anything better. Here is plenty of space. I can, I'm happy having you here. Uh, so because of uh, with modules, the compiler will examine the available class hierarchy, and then it will use the same information and se same set of scenarios uh, when it's running, which means if something is available for compilation, it will be available 
for runtime. It, of course, operates on the package level, which means it's if you have a, a parent package that already has some classes and your code uh, cannot really work with that, if you intend to use modules, you will have to spend some time. Sorry, that's, that's the information. You can have a look at at least some of the open source projects that are getting through the pains. Uh, the project I work in is going to go through those pains uh, starting in a few months. And if you use alternative languages like Groovy, Spar uh, Scala, some of the language support for modules is there. Sometimes the support isn't there. Uh, Scala, well, 2.13 is, is the one that, from what I read recently, was uh, supposed to fully support mo uh, Java modules. So it's going to be a journey, and it's going to be a fun journey, but I think it's good that we are taking those steps. Uh, details about modules, sorry, this could be a talk in its own, which means we'll mention another important thing that came in Java 9, that's reactive streams. Who here likes writing slow, inefficient, very imperative services? Oh yeah, whenever you mention that, some, whenever you accuse anyone of their software being non-performant, it's the worst thing that you can do to developers. Reactive streams, that's an API. So a set of interfaces and a TCK, so technical compatibility kit. For people implementing reactive streams, there is a number of implementations. Uh, here I can recommend two talks. One is called How Not to Use Reactive Streams in Java 9 by Jacek. Jacek, anywhere here? No? But that is a very good talk because it will show you that it's not really that easy to write your own implementation. But it, it will explain all the details why reactive streams are useful and why you should use them, but probably try to avoid implementing them. Probably, because your mileage and your experience, your requirements might differ. And the second talk by our latest, newest uh, Java champion from Poland, Tomasz Nurkiewicz, Reactive Programming Lessons Learned. If you have his book, he might sign it for you, but I'm not Tomasz, so I can suggest anything and get away with that. So we have Java 9. So far, we've been used that Java is great on backwards compatibility. You take a piece of code, you write it with Java 1, uh, or maybe Java J2SE 1.4, da, 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 da. And then you move on. And it keeps working because classes are still there. And then Java 9 did something strange, or strange to our existing perception of what's happening in the world. Methods got removed. You've seen methods in the JDK that have been deprecated forever. And they've always kept being there. Uh, in, Java in Java 9, in JDK 9, they actually removed a number of methods. Six of them in total, but this is a precedent. Uh, this means Java will start removing things. It will do be gentle about it. It will not be, well, we're going to pull the rug and the floor and the building and everything else that you're living, standing on, and the country is going to disappear as well. They are being gentle about it. They have a new uh, annotation called deprecated with for removal flag, which doesn't specify when it gets removed, but it will probably get removed. And they actually started following up on those promises, which means think will start disappearing. Usually, there are migration suggestions. There are migration scenarios for any of those changes. And because of the number of those, again, I wouldn't have the time. It would have to be a very talk focused on just what to do, how to migrate out of this, how to migrate out of that, if you do this and that. W won't have the time. But language changed a bit. A tiny little bit got introduced for the future. Underscore, for, since Java 9 is a keyword, and cannot be used uh, as an identifier. If you have been writing Scala or other languages, you know why. Uh, that thing hasn't yet happened, but what people expect is going to, it's going to become an unused parameters for lambdas, because it makes sense, it's very useful, very useful and very handy in so many places. So, another change, layout. Instead of the usual mishmash of, of directories under, under Java Home, we get something like that. That continues to be the case. And some things disappeared. JavaFX Packager, X EXT, Check, JHAT, JSA, Debug D, JVisual VM, native to ASCII, all gone. Uh, users of, of Visual VM uh, in the room, you probably know where to get it from. One option is always Java 8. But being serious, Visual VM has been open sourced, uh, which means you can get 
the current release of Visual VM by going to, I don't remember the URL from, from, my, from memory, but it's there. It's still developed. You can contribute to it. It still is a very useful, very viable tool. It's just not part of the JDK, which means JDK, the download, becomes lighter. And if the tool has an interface that it works with, you can have multiple JDKs and not download it always and always and again and again and again and again. Makes sense. Uh, a bunch of tools for supporting modules. JImage, very useful. JMod, uh, uh, JShell, that's a great one. JShell, so the REPL, so the read eval print loop, so you can interactively develop with Java. Yay, I have pictures take of, taken off me. Yay. Awesome. And yeah, details. Happy to discuss this with a drink at hand tonight at a party. Uh, fl some flags disappeared. Uh, don't have, you don't have to memorize those. I'll be happy to share the slides. And important, G1, GC by default. This is important because if you're used to expect certain things from G1, now it's your default. It will be there if you didn't set up some, something else. Uh, G1 is awesome because it can use string duplication. If your application has a lot of strings inside, you can ask the garbage collector to actually do the dedu deduplication on your heap. It will, it can save your life. I can give you a story from the startup I work in at the moment. Uh, we're doing agent-based simulations. And because the models have to be interactive, you get, we deal with a lot of JSON. Who here deals with a lot of JSON? Probably most of you. That's normal right now. And Ajax, as you know, means uh, asynchronous JavaScript and JSON. Uh, so strings are omnipresent. Because of that, heap is polluted by a lot of strings. G1 has reduced uh, the re memory requirements of our application by half but just by using this flag, which means it can be a life and death situation or really uh, your customers can win uh, a lot by you using this and then they can look to you, wow, you've done magic by one twe tweak. Can you tweak a bit more? Of course. And now a trick question. Who is planning to migrate to Java 9 here? Raise your hands. A few hands in the room. My answer and my recommendation to this is please don't. The reason is very simple. Java 9 is not developed anymore. If you're targeting Java 9 and if you want to migrate to Java 9 and nothing further, I would say don't do it this way. Look at Java 11. This is the release you should look towards. Unless you want to look at Java 9 and immediately go after, go, then go to Java 10 to reduce the amount of changes that you need to go through. Don't try to migrate to Java 9. It's not present on the usual Java download page. Of course, you can still get the 904 release. It's, it's still available, but it's not developed. If you didn't, then there is, there is no point. So you, what you get instead, you get Java 10. Java 10 does a bit of tooling changes. You get ahead of time compil compiler. Exciting. I recommend you have a look. You get Java H to disappear. Who here integrates Java with C? One brave soul. And I guess Jarek Pauka and Jarek Ratajski somewhere in the audience as well, or somewhere in the conference at least. Uh, Java H, so the header generation for Java is gone. The obvious question, what, okay, w what do we do now? Well, the answer is Java C can do it for you, and policy tool is gone as well. And in Java 10, they've done something nice, parallel full GC for G1, which means in Java 9, the default garbage collector was awesome until it came to a full GC. If you're, you know what a full GC is. It's when garbage collector actually decides to pause your application and go through the whole heap to get rid of the garbage. G1 in JDK 9 and JDK 8 did it with a single thread. It means if you have a lot of cores or you have a large heap, it's going to be a bit slow. With Java 10, that's not the case anymore. And versioning. They did something to versioning as well. And they did something to versioning that's nice. We can actually try having a demo. No, 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 no. It's almost working, but I don't ha get the top of the screen. Hmm. Um. Let's do that. 
Let's try to mirror. Let's go here. And let's do view presentation mode. So Java 9 can parse versions now. And I should be able to run it. And oh no. So you can see those methods are really gone. Uh, some tools are also gone, but hmm, be gone button. <sighs> oh, seriously. Yes, it won't be allowed, of course. Which I told you about, so I should know already, right? But these screenshots have to ca come from somewhere. So you get, you please? yes. So you get version, and you can parse Java dot version with version dot parse, which is nice. Uh, who here checks the version of the Java runtime that they run on? I do, because we want to prevent certain versions. Because if we discover a bug, we want to. This shows a pattern that your software, the one that you are writing yourselves, should also follow. Try to expose the version of the software that you're running as a variable, because people will use it. People will be able to ask for it and verify certain things. For the 99% of use cases, it's not, a, it's not a problem. But for the 1%, when it's actually useful, it's so good that it's there. And then we can have a look at version.major. And version major is deprecated, so the version string, uh, as I said, it's changed. And as of Java 10, the ver da, 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 I don't have to read that. You know what to do. But you can parse it. You can access those parameters programmatically, which is very nice. And we can come back to here. Nice stripes. Uh, another code change. Uh, we don't call objects immutable anymore. We call them unmodifiable. Uh, I feel so different now. I feel so, so different. Uh, but anyway, what that gives us, directly nothing. But they've actually implemented uh, an unmo unmodifiable list and set and map collector. This is important because if you were trying to get an Im immutable or unmodifiable list out of a collector, you had to do some magic. The degree and amount of magic depends on the implementation. I've seen different ways of doing this. But it wasn't as straightforward as it should have been, and it should be a part of the a standard SDK, which people realized, and that's why Oracle was able to do that and push that into JDK 10. And JDK 10 was only released April, May? I think May or April. Doesn't matter. But this shows us a pattern. Java has historically produced major releases every few years. And every new release was a big thing. And every big thing had a lot of changes happening inside it. So the language evolved reasonably slowly, and the, but the changes were bigger bulks rather than small incremental changes. And we in software have heard of things like continuous delivery. We've heard of iterative uh, development so much. And people doing Java are extremely smart. It's a, it takes a lot of brain power to come up with such a platform. It takes a lot of work as well. It's, it's been around for 20 something years. The awesome thing is, with a new release cadence that they've chosen to go after, when there is a new feature release every six months, you get changes like that that get introduced to the language when they actually realize and people convince them that it's a good idea to do something. That puts a bit of burden on the users of the platform, of course, to keep upgrading or if they don't feel comfortable, you can keep using the LTS versions, like 11, which gets released every three years. So every six versions. And so another change, local variable type inference. How many, have, how many months, how many years have we been asking to have it in Java, especially after the C-sharp guys got it first? What they did is var is a reserved type. You can do something like this. You can have var var equals var. Or if you feel like a dog, you can say how, 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 how. Yeah, enough of dry jokes. Var 
will still compile. So if you've used it as a variable name, it's still fine. Why? If you remember upgrading from JDK 4 or 1.4.2, blah, 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 to 1.5, and you have had some enum variables in your code base, you know what happened. You had to go and fix it all. With vars, well, var is a re reasonably common name for a variable, especially if you're out of better ideas or you're just prototyping and you don't really care. So it's A, B, C, var, F, Z. I don't recommend using such variable names, but still they happen, even in my code. So they've made it a legal thing. They thought it would be a very bad practice if this stopped compiling, so you can do this. I will say it very loud from the stage, don't do that. Try to come up with better names. This is trying to be nice, but at the same time, it's not the most, it's not the optimum variable name. Well, you, nobody would want their variable names to be questions. You don't want your friends saying, well, your variable naming strategy is suboptimal. That sounds like a very, very harsh offense. Nobody would like to hear that. So another imp interesting thing, uh, heap allocation on, alterna on alternative memory devices. Heard of Optane? Anyone? Obtain one, two people, three people. Uh, well, we are waiting for our opt obtain device uh, still. But uh, yeah, so if you have an alternative memory device, if you memory map it, you can put Java heap on it. Why? Because performance, because integration with other tools, because if you know those, if you use those tools, you have your reasons for using them, and you you will be able to put Java's heap in there. Uh, Non-volatile memory and anything else that comes under this will will work with that. How do you use it? Just this flag. It won't work with your file system, most probably, well, with the traditional file system. It has to be the, the actual device. And this brings us to Java 11, which is a long-term support version. What this means is it's safe to up upgrade to Java 11. Details will come later. Uh, this version will be in development for the next for a considerable amount of time. It will keep being supported. New commits will go into it. If you go to JDK 10 or JDK 9 source tree, if you do HG log, because uh, so far Java is using Mercurial, you will see that Java 9 is effectively not actively developed. That means no new changes, no security patches, no security fixes. All new work goes into Java 9 until it, get, uh, until it gets released, then all new work happens to go into Java 10. Then it will all go to Java 11. And then six months from now, all new features will go into Java 12. And so on and so on and so on until Java 17 will be the next LTS, if I calculate correctly. Something like that. We'll see. It's three years from now, so it's, it's an age in computing. But Java 11 as a long-term support or long-term supported version will be supported, which means you can pay for support and the source code base will get security and, and, and all the fixes, all the patches that it requires because, well, it's software, so it sadly will have some bugs, unfortunately, but it w those changes will go back into, into 11. The question is, where did Visual VM go? Visual VM go went to Visual VM GitHub IO. We all know GitHub, we're happy. Where is JavaFX? Because Java 11 comes without JavaFX. There is an open source repository that exposes JavaFX. And the question to you now is, well, or the question that you could ask is, yeah, but where is the JavaFX that I can use? Uh, allow me to uncomment this. This is a perfectly valid JavaFX tutorial code. I miss some of the classes, so they aren't really there. For information, this is compiled with uh, JDK 11. Ah, it's here, OK. So you can use your Maven, or you can use your so uh, dependency manager like you would normally. But then you have to go into modules. Or you can pretend you don't want to go into modules and then ignore the, this part completely. But then all becomes good. Let's optimize imports, let's run it, and of course... <sighs> Why is Kotlin there? I do have no idea. Uh, this should not make a difference, but... 
No, there is no code lane. <sighs> okay. Uh, obviously, this didn't happen before. Uh, let's say we'll get back to that in a second because we'll have more, more demos later and we'll have a look at them later. Uh, another thing. Java E and Corba modules, so JAXB, and everything related to Corba is now gone from the JDK. Gone. No longer there. You will need to in, uh, blah, ingest JAXB as a named dependency, which I would say is a great thing because if it becomes a part of the JDK, it kind of solidifies. Uh, EE, the EE specific libraries, well, they, they want to evolve, they want to change because, well, the internet changes. E is to power the internet a bit. So it's useful uh, that they don't exist in the JDK and they can have an independent evolution. A very interesting thing to some special people, uh, epsilon garbage collector and no op garbage collector. A garbage collector that does nothing. So what you do is you set your garbage collector to epsilon and then you look how quickly will your application fail? Why is that useful? Because if you want to measure the impact of garbage collector or specific garbage collectors on your code base or maybe you're writing a garbage collector yourself, you have a baseline. You know what the software will take to run without any GC whatsoever. Quite useful, I would say. Uh, however, the use cases for that are limited. How to do this? You have two flags that you can use, use either one. Uh, I mentioned a few things disappeared. Uh, this is a comparison between JDK 8 and JDK 11. Why these two? Because 8 was the version that most of you are on, and JDK 11 is the version most of you should look towards and migrate to. If somebody finds a tool that they like a lot, and it's gone, you can say there its name. If you have any questions at the same time, if you're worried or, or something, start raising your hands. You can ask questions all the time. Uh, OK. So release cadence. Uh, we, I touched this a bit. So Java has changed to a six-month release cadence for features. Every six months, all the features that are available, they will become a part of a new JDK feature release. So if you're a startup, if you don't, if you have a, let's say, a software as a service solution, nobody installs you, you, you don't really, you, you own the environment, you own the entire stack, you can, you, you're free to up keep upgrading to new feature releases whenever you want. If you're uh, in the land of enterprise software with very, s with very serious companies using you, obviously you probably will want to look at the LTS release, which every six uh, feature versions, every, every six is an LTS. For us, it's 11. And that one will be supported, so all the fixes will go into it. Features, not anymore. We can discuss this later if any questions develop. Uh, and so, you might have noticed some news. Flight Recorder has been uh, removed from the JDK. It used to be added to be in the JDK, now it has been open sourced. Some people call it dev by open sourcing. Uh, if you want to know the, the, some of the details why party is the place to discuss it, but it's not completely gone. It's available on OpenJDK as an independent project, which means it can, develop, uh, it can be developed independently from the JDK. And now the question is, which JDK should you use? Hmm. Oracle JDK, OpenJDK? Or maybe let's try using Ubuntu. Well, if you try using Ubuntu, and this is me running on Oracle Cloud ra launched eight minutes by past midnight, uh, th there is something interesting in here. First person that notices, notices it can, I don't think I have anything to give out. So uh, they will get my handshake if they want to. I hear versions are mismatched, correct. So Ubuntu did something very, very strange. Java minus version or Java minus minus version because they decided to follow the Linux principles finally uh, shows OpenJDK 10.0.2. 
that okay, uh, I want to install OpenJDK 11, which is evident in this place. And then I still get OpenJDK 10. Why? Why on earth? Ubuntu people decided that because people shouldn't have to migrate from 8 to 11 directly, because it's a lot of breaking changes, they will ship o o OpenJDK 10 as 11 and switch it later. Be warned. I know a lot of you use Ubuntu. I use it myself as a lot of backing for development machines. So be warned. Don't be surprised if you in check the version of the package that you have installed. It's just I got hit by it. You will probably as well until it gets fixed. Java can also launch something like this. Quite incredible. Linux people in here, Unix people in here, I think you can be a bit happier. Uh, this is, to me, quite awesome. If you... Let me spell out the significance of this. If you have a single source file, file, uh, you can launch it directly from Java. Even better, Java sh supports a so-called shebang, which means at in the very first line you specify which interpreter should interpret the file that comes after. Which means I can launch this dot, dot shebang just like that, and because it points at the Java interpreter with minus minus source, I can, lo I can launch it. So what's missing is compilation. What's missing is class path management if you produce multiple classes. Any? That manipulation is just gone. If you have proper imports in here, it will work. It's magic. And of course, you don't have to trust me on that, but because projector is a bit funky, with the stripes and so on, will limit console interaction. I can show that demo for you later. And now, the licensing part of the talk. So we've kind of covered some of the technical updates. There is obviously much more than this. But licensing is something important that has changed around Open, uh, open and Oracle JDK 11. You used to go to javaoracle.com and download whatever what was the latest. Right now, there is a nice warning in there that there has been licensing changes. <coughs> JDK and previous are as they used to be. Don't worry if you're using the previous. Don't worry if you want to use the previous. From JDK 11 and on, it's OK to take the Oracle JDK and use it in development, testing, and demonstrations. But if you want to use it in production, you will need a Java SE subscription. So important things to remember. If you're using Java from Oracle in production, you have to get a subscription. You get a subscription by giving money to Oracle. This is probably what raised a lot of the fears in the internet. Well, is Java not free anymore? Do we have to pay them? What's happening with our careers? Well, at the same time as this happened, this is a very legitimate attempt to get some money from the open source development that they have been doing. And companies use support for software, and it's fine for Oracle to actually have an offering in that space. At least that's my opinion. They've made OpenJDK and they've made Oracle JDK effectively very, very similar. I won't call it the same because if you do a div, obviously the, the produced binaries will be slightly different because the source files might have different headers. And I think Oracle JDK has support for Oracle monitoring something, something, something. But apart from this, Oracle JDK and OpenJDK are the same thing which is quite awesome. Before we go further, yeah, those stripes are really irritating. Prices I have seen, you can pay per users or you can pay per uh, processors, depending on which kind of product you are. I would say if you're putting Java versions for users and you have to pay $2.5 per user, it seems acceptable, especially compared to some other software stacks that I've seen. Uh, processor licenses, $25 per processor. Uh, I would say it still looks okay comparing to some other enterprise stacks I've seen. 
But remember, this is only needed if you're using Oracle JDK. If you use Open JDK, you don't have to give money to anyone. If you want support, if you want to be able to call Oracle and say, hey, your JVM crashes, and can you have one of their engineers uh, look at it right now on a Sunday morning on Christmas or 1st of January at 4 a.m.? Not the best time to be debugging and, and solving things, but if you want to, you can. Uh, this raises a natural follow-up question. Which one should you use? The answer is OpenJDK. You go to OpenJDK, you take the OpenJDK from, there is a bunch of links there, and you use it. This is what, what is the new, what should be the new baseline for your development machines, for it should be the, your servers, and then so on. When you're setting up a new server, use OpenJDK unless you have an existing support contract with Oracle. If you want to use Java 11 and onwards. Uh, support, I mentioned support. <laughs> So let's reiterate. Java 8, keep you, you can keep using current version. It keeps being in public support. Uh, supported uh, updates will end in, I think, January of 2019. Uh, all the versions released so far will continue to be downloadable from Oracle. If you are using Java 8, you can keep using Java 8. You don't have to give money or get a license from anyone. It's absolutely fine. You can just like you can download Java 1.4 or whatever the last release and keep using it. It's not the most reasonable thing to do with Java 1.4 now, but you can. Java 9, you can use the Oracle JDK. So the JDK downloaded from oracle.com in production. It's no longer in development, and last publicly available update is now not in 0.4. I don't have the Oracle support subscription, so I don't know if there has been anything else. But looking at the source base, it looks like nothing. Java 10, same story. No longer in development. Last publicly available update, 10.004. You can use it in production as well without a support license. Java 11, this is where the changes happen. Oracle JDK in production only with support license, only with a contract with Oracle. Open JDK is the default that becomes the default for everyone. LTS version code base will be maintained for more than six months. More like 30, 36? Yeah. So this will have much more support. Bug fixes, security problems that people discover, they will get fixed in Java 11 for a longer time. It's a different story. How can you get those updates into your JDK? So if you want more up-to-date builds now, you can self-build. That's easy. You just download the tool chain, wait a bit, and then you have your own JDK. If you've uh, participated in Adopt, JD open, Adopt Open JDK programs or anything similar, you, you know you can build a J J JDK. If you've hacked around it, you can easily do it on most computers right now. Uh, you can go to Adopt Open JDK. You can uh, download Azul Zulu. Uh, you can rely on what your Linux distribution will give you with the caveats I've shown you before. For example, for Ubuntu, and I haven't verified all of the others. Uh, you can use Oracle OpenJDK builds, so from OpenJDK website, or there are also builds of something called Submachine, but I'm just linking this because it's there, not that I have done anything with them. Uh, Adopt OpenJDK. Who here has heard of it? Raise your hands. Uh, Please have a look. If you're interested in hacking around the JVM, please have a look at op Adopt OpenJDK later. Uh, what they do is they offer no paid support, but they have a set of tests that they run against the code bases. They produce binary distributions for a very wide range of platforms. If you have some esoteric platform like, let's say, ZOS and you, or a PowerPC, or I don't even know what an S390 is, uh, you can get the downloads from them, and, and they have a build farm, they have a bunch of volunteers. It's, it's a voluntary, voluntary movement that has adopted OpenJDK and, and fixes bugs and uh, does a lot of the build infrastructure. They also have an agreement with Oracle to have the TCK. The TCK for Java is, TCK stands for Technical Compatibility Kit. It's a set of tests that you have to pass in order to be able to call your Java Java. I'll let that sink in. Uh, so 
you can claim that you have implemented something that's Java uh, compatible, but that, that's your claim. But to be uh, able to do it and use the logo and use, well, this is Java technology, you need to pass the test. This is the legal aspect of it. To get access to the test, you need a license uh, from Oracle. And there has, been a ba there has been some stories about how easy or how not easy it is to get it, whether what Android runs is Java or not. If you want to be Java, the consensus is you need to pass the TCK. And, and also, if you, the builds that Adopt OpenJDK produces using uh, OpenJ9 VM, so open sourced IBM's J uh, JVM, IBM will offer paid support for, which means they will fix the bugs that you find, uh, that you experience using their VM if you use the uh, Adopt OpenJ OpenJDK binaries. Does it make a bit of sense? Yes, no? Any questions? We have five more minutes. So, Zulu. Uh, Azul, the company that, uh, that is behind uh, C the, C4 the C4 GC, so the POSLESS uh, compiler, the only implementation there is, uh, and works and it can work in production with large heaps to give you almost no, uh, or probably, or actually no stops in, in your code. Uh, also built OpenJDK, they also support that and they also do supported builds for the Azure cloud. So if you're in Azure, that if you're in Azure cloud, you can use Azul's tools to be supported. This is not the best naming. Uh, commercial support, as I said, Azul. Uh, they have a roadmap. Those are links. If you get the slides, you can click on them. You know what to do. IBM, as discussed, uh, Oracle JDK. There is a commercial support and there is an offering. The prices I've taken from one of their PDFs, but I don't remember which one. And you can also use Red Hat. They also do Open JDK based uh, supported version. I don't know their details. If we have some Red Hat knowledgeable people in the room, they might want to identify themselves and speak about that. If not, it's fine. It's there. With that, we have three minutes for three minutes for questions. And then I will have to leave you to enjoy a lunch break. Uh, sorry, a coffee break, mm -hmm. and or we can talk in the uh, in the lobby. Questions. There is a there is a question over there, I think, but the lights are blinding me. But you will get a microphone. I can't hear you. Oh, you you can come to here and and say it to me and. Can you can you run a script uh, that was uh, previously shown uh, with time? H how fast is to run s JavaScript in source code, uh, source format? JavaScript or JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. <coughs> mm. Anything else? No. <laughs> that was a very quick failure. No, seriously. Ah, of course, because we're on a Mac. Sorry. So. Uh, let's say yes, I can run it. Of course, it will have to spin up the JVM and, 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 and launch it. Part of the modularization work means that only the modules that are actually required by the JVM uh, will have to get there. So if there are any other questions, I can keep working on this and make it run on, a, on an OS X. Or we can answer some questions. There is a question in the middle. I have a question regarding um, Oracle JDK uh -huh. and the release cadence. So we will have a new version every six months. And do you know if Oracle is going to to release the the security patches after six months uh, to Oracle 11, for example? Uh, no, those patches, those security fixes, will go into whatever is JDK 12 then. Uh, and then JDK 13 when it's out, and so on, and so on, and so on. JDK 11 will get 
security and other patches for the publicly available version only while it's the current version. If you want fixes, Oracle JDK would need a license from you. I don't know what the situation will be in the source code. I expect they will get merged into the source repository, which means if you build uh, yourself OpenJDK using JDK 11 source tree, or you use one of the build mechanisms, build providers mentioned before, you will still have those fixes integrated. So after that six months, we have to uh, rely on the fixes provided by the community. Those are not fixes provided by the community. Those are fixes built, or those are binaries built by the community, but the fixes, the code, is the same co the code. The uh, code of the JDK is developed in the open. Code of the JDK, of Oracle JDK, relies on the Oracle, uh, on Open JDK. So Oracle JDK is the Open JDK code base with an additional tool or two, some different license files, and that's it. There is no other mirror or, or something similar, no. If you look at the commit logs, actually that's easy. Let's go to JDK OSS and JDK 11. Which ones do I have here? I have Java 10 here, okay. So all those things are actual patches that form JDK 10 development. I don't know when I last updated this. Probably 6th of October, maybe, maybe not. It's a shame I don't have uh, JDK 11 in here. Too many computers, I think I p did it on the other, other laptop. So, uh, but yes. You can build it yourself, you can use Adopt Open JDK, you can use an Open JDK build provided by someone else. The code base is publicly available. I don't know, or I haven't seen a precedent of them withholding a fix from the public code base. If that's what you're asking for, uh, I'm curious what will happen. But because the software is open source, people are able to submit patches to the JDK 11 source tree. You can do it as well. You will have to sign a, a, a development agreement and so on, but you can do it. And then the risk is that in six months the, the Oracle JDK and Open JDK will diverge. Uh, what I mean is that Oracle may stop publishing their patches to Open JDK 11. Uh, well, that's the risk I see here. Um, yeah, so uh, JDK 11 will not get security patches. Because those security patches for the publicly visible uh, part will go into JDK 12. This is the whole change of the release cadence. All of their development efforts go into one publicly exposed, publicly visible JDK release. As of now, it is JDK 11. In six months, this becomes JDK 12. Then everything, all Steam goes into that, plus new features. Then everything goes into JDK 13, and so on, and so on, and so on. Which means, if you want to use a continuously supported JDK 11, you have to get those patches from somewhere. This is one of the, one of the ways that Oracle wants to make money. Uh, what shape Oracle JDK will have after two years, well, if the patches, when the patches are there, when the patches are not there, versus what the Open JDK will look like? Yes, they will di diverge a bit, because we, I cannot say what a supported version of Oracle JDK will, how different it will be, because I haven't seen it. That's one. Still, the consensus is that the source base, the source code tree is open, so you can build it, and in theory, there shouldn't be too many differences. So all the, all the fixes should be out there in the open, so you should be able to build them. But this version will not be something that has all the blessings of being an official build, unless you use one of the official builds. So I would say go to ado adopt OpenGDK after those six months and then see what happens in there. Uh, we can talk about it more in the, in the corridor. I think it will be much easier without the lights that are kind of blinding me now. Any more questions? I would like to add something because yeah? uh, I think if we are talking about Java 11, there uh -huh. is no risk because uh, if I know correctly, um, Java 11 will have uh, a security patches uh, 
for the next uh, three years. So there is no risk, in my opinion. Uh, yes, but you will see only... Uh, you will only see... Wh why is that not working? Where is this file then? Because it's in Dropbox. Okay. So you see what the, what the danger of using multiple uh, source repositories is. Uh, sadly, I've been bitten. This should be the JDK 11. So I want to do this. And can I run it now? Yes. And that answers your question, I think, to here. Yeah. So it's a second of user time. Uh, is it short for a script? No. It should be faster. It could be faster. Uh, the thing is, you can do it. So it's adding a capa capability versus not having it at all. Uh, licensing question, I would suggest uh, let's grab the corridor after this. And I'm happy to talk with you, let's say, the sofas area in the, in the dining room. OK, thank you very much for thank the Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>